Hello students welcome back so this is our lecture number 3 of the chapter life process well in the previous lecture we have already studied about the digestion of food in the stomach now let us see what happens when food enters the small intestine so as you can see here this is the food entering into the small intestine from the stomach this is the stomach and this is the small intestine small intestine is the longest part of the alimentary canal so it is the longest part of the alimentary canal which is about 5 to 6 meters long it is fitted into a compact space in the belly by extensive coiling so here belly means abdomen that is our stomach and extensive coiling means twists and turns as you can see here the small intestine it is fitted in our stomach in a very compact space by twists and turns all right next see it is longer than the large intestine so the small intestine is longer than the large intestine definitely from this figure as you can see that it is longer than the large intestine now why it is called small intestine you might be thinking right so it is called small intestine because it has smaller diameter so small intestine has smaller diameter as compared to large intestine all right next point carbohydrates fats and proteins are fully digested in the small intestine okay guys try to keep these three things in your mind the carbohydrates fats and proteins these are digested in the small intestine all right digestion of food in the small intestine requires alkaline medium uh, so there should be alkaline medium in the small intestine uh, to digest the food so the food received from the stomach has to be first made alkaline all right now let us see how does it happen okay as you can see here the food is entering uh, from the stomach to the small intestine but before that see here this is the stomach this is the gall bladder this is the liver and behind the stomach the pancreas is present okay now as you can see that the liver which is the largest gland in the body it secretes bile juice so liver secretes bile juice all right this bile juice is stored in the gall bladder so this is the gall bladder and the, uh, the bile juice which is secreted by the liver it is stored in here it is stored in the gall bladder all right so see here this is the bile juice uh, storing in the gall bladder whenever food enters the small intestine the gall bladder releases bile juice into it through a duct so whenever the food enters into the small intestine the gall bladder uh, which releases the bile juice into it through a duct all right so see here the bile juice uh, stored in the gall bladder it releases the bile juice uh, into the small intestine through a duct and duct is present over here okay now see here the bile makes the food alkaline so now i hope everyone is clear how food gets alkaline it is the bile which makes the food alkaline all right so this is uh, the alkaline ph okay now see here it also breaks the large fat globules into smaller ones this increases the action of enzyme so bile also breaks down the large fat globules into smaller ones so these are the large fat globules and this is called as emulsification of fats now i hope everyone is clear what do you mean by emulsification of fats so it is the breakdown of a large fat globules into smaller ones which increases the action of enzymes all right so these are your fat uh, globules which breaks down into small particles clear everyone all right now the pancreas secretes the pancreatic juice so this is the pancreas which is present behind the uh, stomach it releases pancreatic juice now see here the pancreas and the bile the pancreatic juice i mean and the bile enters the in small intestine through a common duct so the bile from the gall bladder and uh, the pancreatic juice from the pancreas it enters into the small intestine through a common duct so common duct is present here the pancreatic juice has three digestive enzymes the first one is trypsin so trypsin digests the proteins into amino acids okay now see this is trypsin and this is proteins uh, where trypsin digests the proteins into amino acids the second digestive enzyme is lipase where lipase digests fats into fatty acids so see here this lipase it digests the fats into fatty acids 
that her digestive enzyme is pancreatic amylase. So pancreatic amylase digests carbohydrates into glucose. All right. So pancreatic amylase digests carbohydrates into glucose. Okay. Now, so finally, we can say that the complex food, that is the carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, here the complex food are converted to simple food, and it uh, gets converted to in the form of starch as a glucose, fats as a fatty acids, and in proteins as amino acids. I hope everyone is clear. So thus the food is completely digested in the small intestine. So this is how the food gets completely digested in the small intestine. Am I clear to you students? Alright. Now the digested food passes down through the small intestine. Okay so see here uh, the digested food which passes down through the small intestine. So inside the small intestine there are numerous finger leg projections called villi. So let us see villi. So this is the villi uh, which is present on the lining of the small intestine and it looks like finger leg projections, right? Villi absorb the digested food. So the digested food are being absorbed by villi. And villi are richly supplied with blood vessels. So this villi, they are richly supplied with blood vessels. The absorbed food is taken to each and every cell of the body where it is utilized for obtaining energy. So the absorbed food it is taken to each and every cell of the body. So see here uh, where it is utilized for obtaining energy. So can you see here these are the absorbed food which are taken to each and every cell of the body where it is utilized for obtaining energy. Alright, now the unabsorbed food passes into the large intestine. So all foods they don't get absorbed. The remaining unabsorbed food it passes into the large intestine. Okay, can you see here the unabsorbed food being passed into the large intestine. Here the large intestine does not have any digestive functions. Okay, this large intestine it is about 1.5 meters long. Okay, so see here the large intestine it does not have any digestive functions. Okay, so here also villies are present which absorb water and salts. Okay, so see here these are the unabsorbed food. Now rest of the material is removed out through the anus. So those unabsorbed food, uh, those are removed out through the anus. And this is the anus which is present at the end of the large intestine. Okay, so see here it is being excreted out. Now the exit is regulated by the muscle called anal spincer. So this exit, it is also regulated by a muscle and that is called anal spincer. So anal spincer is a type of muscle. Alright guys, I hope everyone understood how the digestion of food takes place in the small intestine as well as in the large intestine. Okay. So thank you guys.